Good afternoon everyone, it's Krebs here, and today we're going to be playing a little bit of War Thunder. So we're going to be checking out some higher level USSR planes today. In fact, it's going to be level 9 and below. So, in the last episode we were checking out some level... Uh, I can't even remember what planes they were, but they definitely weren't level 8 and 9. The star of this show, this episode, is going to be the level 8 and 9 planes. I think in the last episode we were introducing the Era Cobra, weren't we? Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that. Right, okay, so let's get on to it. Krebs is in a little bit of a rush, so I've got one chance to make this episode right and say everything I need to do properly. So, uh, here we go. So, in the last episode, we were taking a look at the Era Cobra, the introduction of the 37mm cannon. It's an M4, and it's a very powerful thing. A lot of people have been saying that USSR planes are very, very powerful. And in fact, a lot of people have been saying that they're OP. Do I agree with it? Nah, I don't agree with it. Yeah, they are, they're strong. A lot of planes out there are strong for certain factions. Um, but I think every single plane has its ups and downs. So, for example, I'd like to say that the USR, USSR has uh, trouble turning, and at times their wings can actually fly off spontaneously. Their wings come off really easily. Uh, so anyway, let's take a look at some other cannons that will be available once you get a little bit higher in the levels. Uh, once you've leveled up a bit more, you'll be able to get the following, a Yak-9T, which is a 37mm cannon as well, but it's an NS-37, okay, so that's slightly different from the M4, um, and I feel that the Yak-9T is actually more powerful than the Era Cobra when it comes to the, uh, to the, uh, 37mm cannon. I, I just feel like the NS-37 is superior than the M4, at least from what I noticed. Or maybe it's just the fact that it sounds so menacing when it fires. Whenever you hear one of these guys on your tail, on your six, or whenever you're shooting somebody with it, you can just imagine the, the fear that you're striking into their hearts uh, with how, how deadly it sounds. Uh, another plane that we're going to be making a showcase of today is the Yak-3. It's a tier 9 plane. Uh, I think we should quickly mention that the Yaks over here, in general, they have good maneuverability. However, what you'll notice with these uh, ones, like the Yak 9T, turn time 18.5 seconds. It's not horrible. It's about average. Yak 3 is brilliant because it has an advantage over the other ones where it has a greater speed and also a better turn time. Not as powerful because it has the 20mm uh, cannon, but it also has two 12.7mm machine guns on it. Uh, rather than the single one that's available to the Yak-1B. So, it's pretty much an advanced version of the Yak-1B in every single manner. Uh, I think we're still missing out one more cannon somewhere. What, why do I feel like there should be one more? Ah, yes. If you bought this plane, this one, the Aero Cobra SU, then you'll have three cannons, 37mm cannons, available to you by Tier 8 with the USSR. This plane was only on sale for a limited time. In fact, it was not last weekend, but I believe the weekend before that. Some sort of special event that was going on, and it was on sale for about three days. That was limited edition, so I don't know if they're going to be bringing it back into the store again, but if they do, chances are it'll be a while. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the other one, the Air Cobra SU. Has a 37mm cannon on it as well. Okay, so that's going to be the of the show. Let's go ahead and actually get some battles uh, rocking out here. I know I'm actually higher than the than level 9 at the moment. I'm, in fact, I'm level 10. Yes, I'm level 10. And I've purposely taken off the King Cobra because I want to do that in the next episode. I want to do the King Cobra in the next episode. Uh, something for you guys to look forward to. Has a great name. King Cobra. Um... <laughs> so yeah, we've got three cannons available to us. I think the first plane I'll go out, we'll start from top to bottom. We'll start with the Yak-3. No, it doesn't have the most powerful, it doesn't have the NS-37 on it, but uh, or the M4, but we'll just start top to bottom. I'll show you guys how it's like. In a way, I would actually say the Yak, um, the Tier 9 Yak is almost like, like an energy fighter and a turn fighter combined. So you get different sorts of fighters. You get uh, you get the energy fighters, you get turn fighters, you get boomer, boom and B and Zs, yada yada yada, right? Uh, I feel like the Yak-3 is almost like two of them combined. So the energy and the turning fighter. We're playing Ground Strike on Lonely Islands, okay? I'll get onto this map specifically in just a second. Uh, what you'll notice when you're flying this, it gains speed so, so quickly. And it has such great sharp turning capabilities that, uh, yeah, that's why it feels like both of them at the same time. 
So anyway, as I was saying, Lonely Island over here. Uh, a lot of people don't know actually how to play this mode, but you cannot capture A directly, okay? So I see a lot of people that try to land down the airfield and they're thinking, oh, we're going to capture the point. No, it doesn't work like that. What happens is that each side has their own cargo ships, and from those cargo ships, I'm sure some of you know this by now, uh, it's that landing craft come out of them, and the landing craft release tanks from them, and so whatever has superiority is the one that's actually uh, is the team that starts capping. Alright, let's actually go into the clouds a little bit. Maybe I can get some cover here. Hopefully Krebs is going to do well. I'm in a bit of a rush today, guys. Uh, hopefully that won't uh, take a toll on my playing. Uh, I think we'll come on top of this Bullfurt, Bullfurt, Bullfighter rather, sorry, Bullfighter over here, and uh, maybe we'll try to take him out. Look at that, Bullfighter trying to escape, but uh, he's just behind him here. That's a critical hit, he's gone, he is out of the sky just like that. Check if somebody's behind me, and sure enough there is somebody behind me. And I didn't actually pay attention to what his name was because I couldn't read what it was. Yak7, yeah, I ah, should be okay. He's, plus, he's uh, just flying on by. So I suppose that's a good tip for you guys. You know, check your six whenever you just engage somebody. I'm trying to get, get him back. Anyway, he's going to be going uh, down over there. So I feel like I've, I've supported the team quite quite, quite nicely already. Taking out a bow fighter. Bow fighters are uh, priority targets here. So we've got an IL-2 coming on up. Let's take this guy out as well. Look at that. You could just see he was just going straight on up. <laughs> I mean, it's all about having a little bit of a situational awareness. What's going on around the field. Sure, you're, look, you're heading on up, but while you're doing some, something very repetitive, something very um, boring in a way, you're just heading straight upwards, you might as well be looking around what is going on around me. Um, and I think that's probably where he failed and maybe he just totally disregarded what was happening, but just because he was making a ascent, he's got slower speed, uh, and also, since I was on the underside of him, I could see his belly, that gave me uh, plenty of opportunity to just fire at him, lots of area to shoot at. Okay, so this uh, Kitty Hawk is no chance at outturning me, and this is what I love, what I love about this plane. It's just like, it's an energy fighter and a, a turning fighter at the same time, it's so, it's so good. Uh, so once a Kitty Hawk, if you ever play a Kitty Hawks in this game, uh, you'll notice how slow they are at turning. It's just ridiculous. Like the powerful planes, don't get me wrong, the, the guns on them are great, but they're so slow at turning. And as soon as somebody uh, tries to turn on you, well, you're probably going to be able to do it. Okay, let's try to get the bow fighter out of the sky. He looks like he was trying to take out a number of us. And in fact, I might actually give up on this in a second because he's flying away. We all know that bullfighters are powerful when it comes to uh, speed. Let's see if I can get the fighter. Oh dear. Oh dear. See, whenever somebody's doing something like that, turn on you, that's so easy to actually collide into somebody when they're doing something like that. Okay, bullfighter, round two. Here we come. Bullfighter, round two. And he has got a destroyed fuselage, a damaged fuselage rather. Let's see if I can finish it off. I think there's some guy near me here. His tail's damaged, so that means he's going to be crashing. Uh, if you watched my last episode, if you watched my last episode, uh, I said, whenever you, <laughs> God, somebody finished him off. Damn it! Whenever somebody. It has their tail damaged. Do you keep on trying to take them on? Do you keep on trying to take them on and finish them off, or do you just let them crash their death? Well, because when you damage a tail, they lose control completely, and they will crash eventually. But the thing is, kill stealers, kill stealers, kill stealers. There's going to be so many kill stealers in this in this game. So uh, chances are, if there's teammates near you. Yeah, just go ahead and finish it off. I'm not winning this uh, this race here, this turnaround war. It's a Spitfire Mark One. Spitfires are really, really just a pain in the arse when it comes to turn fights. In almost every single engagement out there, a Spitfire will win a turn fight. So I'm just gonna—I don't know. 
I, I don't know how, exactly how to get rid of these guys. Um, maybe I'll have to revisit this in the future. How to uh, how to turn a Spitfighter. But I'm having a feeling it might actually come down to his lack of speed. Uh, it looks like a lot of times when he's trying to circle on you, he's losing a lot of speed. And so what you'll notice is that he was dropping down quite low. My engine's out, don't care. I'm trying to show you guys uh, a variety of planes here. So let's try to use the engine power as long as we possibly can. And that's it. This could be it. I'm still flying for a while here, aren't I? Flying here for a while. Come on, boomerang, we can finish you off. How is my engine still alive? I guess it's not full black, it's just flashing black. I don't care if I'm getting shot now. No point in trying to be evasive when I'm pretty much guaranteed to die here in a second. Gonna finish him off. Come on, crabs, come on. Yeah! Happy days, happy days. Uh, let's see, so somebody's probably behind me. Let's turn around on them. And my engine is... It feels like it's dying. Still not dead. <laughs> surprised that it's alive for so long now. I'm actually very surprised. Uh, airfield's over there. Could get repaired. Uh, but like I said, I'm just here to demonstrate planes to you guys. Don't care if I, I die. I'm not trying to play my absolute best at the moment. Come on, kill me! You still can't kill me. <laughs> I don't know what's going on! I'm doing these things intentionally. I'm coming straight at somebody, hoping that I'll die. But I'm not dying. There we go! Finally, Krebs is dead. I actually didn't even notice that Era Cobra coming at me. I thought he was like a distant target. Guess that was my fault. Uh, anyway, Yak 9T, let's go ahead into this thing and I'll show you guys the NS37. I've still got another 15 or so minutes of gameplay I can offer you guys. Um, <clears throat> this map, as I was saying, is a bit strange. You've got landing craft and then the tanks eventually are the ones that cap the points. When you're playing fighters on this map, it can be... It can almost be like you're fighting the wrong war. Of course you're always going to need fighters, but bombers will be very very essential in this map. Maybe not necessarily dedicated bombers, but bombs in general. If it's attackers or fighters with bombs, bombs in general will be the important in this map. Because as I was saying, it's the uh, tanks and such that do the uh, capping. Let's try to finish off this guy. And I don't want to kill my teammates here. There we go. One big shot and that's it. Here we go, this is the problem with the Yak-9T. Look at the slow maneuvering. Look at the very slow maneuvering. Uh, it, it feels completely different from what the... It feels completely different from what the uh, Yak-3 was. What, doesn't it? That guy's gone. And my cannons are reloading. JU-87 over here. Very easy target. Very, very easy target. And he's gone. And one of our teammates. Well done, guys. Defending the targets. Okay. IO-4 back the way. Nothing to be worried about. I'm gonna go uh, help some of my guys over here. Lag 3 seems the closest. But he's straying away a little bit. Krebs is leading at the moment with the most points. Tied with most kills. My goal is always to get the most kills in the match. <laughs> is it bad? Nah, I don't think so. It's just what my goal is. And let's see. So, ooh, we've got a JU-87 coming from the side here. That's strange. And we've got a lag who is trying to turn on us. This Krebs is out of position right now. Krebs is out of position right now. Uh, okay. Right, GU87 again. Let's do that. <sighs> Come on, guys, cover me, somebody. Could use a little bit of support here. There we go. Aircraft destroyed, but Krebs took a big beating there. Krebs took a big beating and I'm losing a lot of my control of my actual plane right at the moment. 
Ah, come on. Come on. Come on, Krebs. I'm, the steering is very hard at the moment, I'm sorry. The steering is very hard just because I've lost all my flaps. Ah, so close. So, so close. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm not. this is not proper turning at the moment, and I'm telling you, it's just because my flaps are, are gone. Are gone over here. Whoa! Whoa, buddy! Whoa, what is going on? <laughs> I'm flying like a ballerina at the moment. Look at that. What the twists and flips. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite satisfied with that. Maybe it wasn't the best demonstration of the Yak-9T, but uh, I'm, I'm quite satisfied with at least taking down another guy who had to crash into me. Whatever. It's cool with me. Uh, okay, so eight kills at the moment. Now it's the Aero Cobra. This is the uh, premium one. Well, I mean, they're both premiums anyway. But this is the SU, the limited edition one. In one of the last episodes, you guys were saying, Krebs, 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 Aero Cobra is a USA plane. It's not a USSR plane. Trust me, guys, I know this stuff. I know this stuff. I mean, a lot of times you guys will say the obvious to me. You'll be like, Krebs, did you know you can turn uh, to combat flaps by pressing F? Or, uh, Krebs, do you know you can check your stats by holding tab? It's just, it's just, you know, people are saying the obvious things to me. I don't know why you guys do it. Why do you do it? <laughs> Krebs isn't that daft. And yes, I do know that the Aero Cobra is originally from the USA. And same with the Kitty Hawk. Okay. But, uh, we were using the Russian versions. Whoa! That was my fault. Got way too fast here. Go way too fast. That's me gone. Oh dear. Oh dear me. Okay, next plane we'll go into. We'll try the uh, the tier seven uh, premium plane. This thing. People call it like a UFO almost because it's weird handling. The Aero Cobra. Not a good example at all. Ended up uh, getting too much of a fast dive and couldn't pull out. And just the way that guy was angled on the side, yeah, just clipped him, unfortunately. Let's try to play better this time. Here we go, so we've got A20G over here, I believe that's a Havoc. Yeah, it's a Havoc. We've got Beaufort. Nearest target, so I guess we'll go for the Beaufort. Beaufort can be a bit of a pain in the arse to uh, take out because he's just a, he's a big bomber. So what I tend to do is I just launch a bunch of missiles at him, a bunch of rockets, uh, call it a early day's work, and he's finished off quickly. So this plane, very very nice. Uh, powerful guns. It looks like it looks like this gun. You'll see when I'm firing it, but it almost looks like you've got 1,000 gu <laughs> guns firing at the same time. It's only four guns, but because of how rapid it's firing, it looks like so much more. Go for right there. He's engaging the BF-109. BF-109 is going to end up getting killed. I mean, Beaufort could easily get killed here, but BF-109 might actually die because of the uh, back gunner. And I think that's actually maybe what happened. Come on for luck! Rockets! No! Oh, we didn't get to see it. Damn it. Okay, well that is the match. Uh, this is nice, short and sweet for Krebs, and probably exactly the sort of match I'm looking for. To fit into time constraints. Could have done better with the Yak 9T, could have done better with the Aero Cobra, most definitely. But uh, if. Uh, maybe I can show some better gameplays in the future, okay? So, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this Wii analysis and also the gameplay and commentary. Uh, if you enjoyed it, I really hope that you guys can share it with your friends. It really does uh, help me a lot and makes me. keeps Krebs happy. So, until next time, I will catch you all later. Right, here we go! Three, two, one.